I am going to be very pleased that I bought myself some uh, spare shoes in the car today. I am sliding through the mud. Usually I'm, I'm complaining, aren't I, about there being noise pollution. Oh, too many cars. I want to be in the middle of nowhere. And that's where I am today. Penwood in Berkshire, surrounded by some very posh houses. And none of them actually driving their Range Rovers today. So it's pretty quiet for the Friday Photo Walk. Photography Daily, the Friday Photo Walk. It's that edition of the week where I take your emails and your messages that you've sent in about your photography, your plans, your projects, and of course your feedback about the episodes that you've heard. And it's the perfect excuse to grab a camera and make some pictures just because. And today I'm in Penwood in Berkshire. Well, more the open countryside part of it, not so woody. I know you like me to tell you a little history about the places I walk in, but there's, there's nothing much to say, really. There's a, a small shop just round the corner in Penwood Village, and that's about it. That is your history. I could make some up if you'd like. Uh, but instead, let me tell you about MPB.com, who are supporting us again this month. MPB is now the world's largest resale platform for digital photography and filmmaking kit, with offices in Brighton, UK, Brooklyn, USA, and Berlin for Europe. If you're buying, selling or trading, these are the people you can trust to make the whole thing easy to do. And that's what you need. Peace of mind, which means quite simply, you've got a guarantee when you buy and you've got money in your bank quickly when you sell. What more could you want? So, cameras at the ready. Let's go walking and talking in this week's Friday Photo Walk edition. Let's get to some of your, your emails then. We may as well get this one done before we go any further. Uh, one to the complaints department, that Dane called Hegard. If this were a Harry Potter movie, this would most certainly be a, be a howler right now. Thanks for drawing my attention to Daniel Hughes. I'll definitely dive some more into his work. Episode 155 combines two of my hobbies, Neil, cycling and photography. Kudos for that part. You know, you can always feel a butt coming, can't you? There's, there's definitely a, there's a butt here, isn't there? I can sense it because he's typed a, an ellipsis here. In fact, not just one ellipsis, a double ellipsis. However, see, same word, slightly different, but it's a butt. There's one thing about road cycling that you've totally misunderstood. And I'm, I'm going to have to correct you in the strongest possible way and give you some homework. It is the ascent, not the descent, that's the essence of and contains the beauty of road cycling. You can't hide on a mountain climb. This is where your technical abilities, your form, and unfortunately for my part, your age and weight expose you. Just in case you're wondering what we're talking about, I spoke to Daniel Hughes, who's uh, an adventurist photographer, um, former pro cyclist, and he still cycles. In fact, he, he spends all his time trying to find the, the most uh, demanding... Um, climbs all across the world which he photographs um, makes some incredible landscape pictures from but within that interview I, re I remember asking him I know it's a very amateur cyclist thing to ask but I said uh, listen Daniel um, I, I don't quite understand why all your pictures uh, are of you going uphill where's all the ones having the fun going down the hill so I'm sure, just like Hegard the Dane here, he probably looked skyward as, as he heard that question coming down the line to him, thinking, oh dear, here we go. Anyway, Hegard continues, most importantly, it's the climb that can bring you into a meditative state, the flow, very similar to what you can experience when it's only you and your camera on the hunt. Reaching the top is the culmination of all your efforts, Beautiful and memorable, especially when the experience is shared and retold over a well-deserved beer. The descent, on the other hand, well, that can be scary as hell. It's technically demanding. Often you're tired and cold and a bit sort of unfocused because, um, as an amateur, uh, you've already achieved what you set out to do, getting that famous coal under your belt. Now, the coal bit of it is these peaks, these climbs that you do. I did learn that bit, you see. These epic coals, as they're called. Uh, that cyclists like to uh, uh, like to take on these these huge mountains and hills and have I got that right? I have, haven't I? When you're coming down high speed, easy, plus 45 miles an hour, even for amateurs, bad roads with potholes, gravel in the sharp cuts, sudden shifts from sunshine to dark tunnels. 
I definitely prefer to let a more experienced downhill rider take the lead. I don't have the courage to tell my wife about this part of the experience. Hopefully in that case, then, she doesn't listen to this podcast. Speaking of she who must be obeyed, remember Rumpole? You don't watch that show still, do you? Where else would your wife allow you to wear funny shoes, tight lycra, and a bandana than on a mountainside in Italy or France? I can't think of anywhere else. Can you? Well, I can, actually, but uh, that's usually Sunday evenings only. I'm sorry for the slightly harsh tone. You'll receive a friendlier message next time. Homework on the beauty of cycling and movies. And he's <laughs> he's put in a, a YouTube link, a bit of which I've watched, actually, I want you to know. When I saw this email, I, I, I watched it. It was... Um, of uh, dozens of cyclists um, road racing. What I thought was a bit unfair was the amount of mopeds that get in their way. They, I mean, they're dodging pedestrians, they're dodging mopeds, they're dodging doctors' cars. Seems to me quite a dangerous activity. I'm going to stick to my very short cycle rides of five miles a time and avoiding hills. Thank you for your email. I do feel rightly told off, and if you want to hear that interview, that uh, Hagar the Dane, one of our one of our regulars, sounds like a pub. Then uh, episode one five five, Daniel Hughes um, interview. That's the that's the one to go to. Hope you enjoy it. I was hoping to find a wood today, and that sort of thing. I did. I know I did it last week. So perhaps. Uh, Perhaps open space is, uh, is correct for this week. I think I've done about three miles so far-ish. Andy Thibault. Is it Thibault? You're the first Thibault I've uh, ever met in my entire life, Andy. Can I first start out by saying your show is incredible? Well, you can, and flattery will get you everywhere. Um, I listen to the Fuji cast as well. Both are great, and I can listen over and over to them. I don't know where you come up with all the things you talk about, and uh, I love the Friday walkabout. But (laughs) that should be the new name for this, the Friday walkabout, not the photo walk, the walkabout. I haven't taken too many photos so far today. I have to say, I'm not truly inspired, because I'm I'm in a lot of open land here, which is lovely. I mean, I've walked for a a fair way, but uh, I'm sort of edging onto coppice and and woods, but... uh, so far, it just seems to be one long track. Follow the one long track. I, like you, have an X-Pro1 that I use with my vintage lens. 25 years, uh, I shot film from Nikons, 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 to Hasselblad, to Leica M2. I also developed my own and had my own darkroom. And then one day, about three years ago, I purchased a, a Fuji X100, which, of course, kind of explains why, uh, why you came to the Fuji cast. Um, I couldn't believe what I was getting out of that camera. To uh, make a long story short, I sold everything. Darkroom and my one regret, Leica M2, and I've been shooting Fuji since. Purchased an X-T1, then decided to sell the X100. Oh, I'm being rained on. Can you hear that? So sold the X100, an X-T1, and purchased a new X-C3 at the beginning of this year. By the way, I think the X-C3 is the most underrated camera in the Fuji lineup. I've got to be honest, that's a... It's a camera I've I've not even held in my hands. I know that my co-presenter over on the Fuji cast, Kev, um, is quite. I think he's got quite a sort of a warm place for that camera, but uh, it's not one that I've used. And it reminds me of the Leica I had. And this year, I also purchased an X Pro One, which I use manually. Uh, but my favourite lens I have is the the 35-14. Wow, the characteristic of that lens is incredible. Have a great day from Andy. Well, certainly my, my passion is shared on the, the X-Pro1 with my uh, vintage lens on. I have to say, uh, I've got the X100F. As I think I said last week, my son <laughs> seems, to have, uh, seems to have nicked that from me at the moment. I can't prize it back. Um, but uh, the, X, the X-Pro1 I'm loving because that, that for me, uh, paired with the vintage lens, everything's very manual. I'm really enjoying the manual process of the whole thing. Yeah, that's something that uh, that uh, I'm fully subscribed to, like you. Thanks for your email. And uh, one from Logan Martinson. Hello, Neil. Been listening to this show since day dot, which admittedly isn't that long ago, but I was a listener when this used to be called Breathe Pictures. 
He managed to get about eight episodes, but this one, you'll be at 300. I'm sure by the time you get to my mail. Ah, well, there you are wrong, Logan, because here we are at, uh, what are we this week? Uh, with, the, with the photo walk. It's 157, isn't it? Yeah, episode 157 today. So I have two questions. Uh, you asked somebody the other day what the most important thing they carried in their kit bag was, and I wonder what your choice would be. That's a good question. Um, well, I suppose, actually. Uh, well, sat we would have been sat-nav. Definitely would have been sat-nav. Uh, and the days when we used to carry tom-toms everywhere. Do you remember those days? When car companies treated sat-nav like it was a luxury item. A bit like... I don't know, electric windows years ago. I remember my, uh, my friend Stephen, oh, what was his surname? Oh, many, many, many moons ago from uh, primary school days. His father had a, had a Citroen, one of those, uh, what, were, what, were, what were the Citroens that were really low on the ground? They looked really cool. Ah, um, was it, was it, uh, is it DX or am I thinking of a camera? I'm sure somebody's going to correct me on this one. Um, but yeah, he, uh, that had a, I'm sure that had electric windows in the back and in the front, and that was like my poshest friend. You've got electric windows in your car? How decadent. If I knew the word decadent at the time, that's the word I would have used. And he also had, uh, he also had an eight-track recorder in the car. Whoa, that was posh. Sadly, his mum and dad only seemed to like ABBA, so we just entertained ourselves with the, uh, with the electric windows instead. Um... But I suppose, actually, if it, if it, if it were a lens, um, it would be a 35mm focal length lens. Definitely, on that count. Or I suppose, actually, if it were a light, uh, Lumi Muse. I've got a little six-lamp Manfrotto Lumi Muse lamp, uh, which I use often in place of flash, actually. I, I quite like the constant light source... Um, using that sometimes artistically. So, uh, yeah, the Lumi Muse, I've used that so often. I've worked my way through a fair few, actually, because I seem to... <laughs> I either leave them in places or I drop them on the floor. They seem to be... They're, they're, like, they're slippery like a fish to me, but they're fantastic bits of kit. And uh, the other question, if you've learned one thing from the interviews that you've conducted this year, what would that be? Well, there is a big open question, because uh, I've spoken to... Uh, uh, to over a hundred people this year for um, for various podcasts, uh, this one, the Fuji Cast, some YouTube stuff, various other bits and bobs. Uh, well over a hundred, I'm sure. And uh, so I've I've, um, I've gathered lots of hints, tips, and uh, golden nuggets of uh, of advice. Well, if I was thinking more recently, one of the uh, one of the really good hints uh, or tips that I got recently was. Uh, that I need to be, a, I suppose, a, a better part of the service industry. In, in, well, in terms of being a photographer that is of service to somebody in, instead of a photographer who is uh, lives on his or her ego. Um, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, that photographers uh, sometimes on the about pages, <laughs> you tend to... You, it was a, I suppose it was a habit. Or, or tradition is, is tradition the better word where photographers would uh, you know their about pages would be oh I love cupcakes I love a chocolate cupcake I've got a cat called Shergar uh, I love I've got a real ale obsession I mean none of that is important I learned that recently from uh, it was on episode 147 with Brian Caparici we talked about business and uh, so I, I've I've been <laughs> It's this sort of constant sort of work on, on my new website. But that's one thing I'm, I'm definitely going to put into practice that, uh, that came from my conversation with Brian, was to, uh, to really you know, to have a website that says, what can I do for you? How can I, how can I be of assistance for you? What do you need from me? That kind of approach I, le- I learned about. Um, and actually, since we're talking about recent shows, um, Jonathan Critchley, episode 153, right at the start of the week, who underlined uh, the following, really, and I'll, I'll play you a clip about why it's so important to be your own boss. I think this is something, this is a feeling I've, I very much share with him. So perhaps it's not something I've learned, but it's certainly something that, um, that I subscribe to. 
the first thing was that I was never going to work for anybody else again as long as I lived. That yeah. was it. I'm going to be my own boss and the, and the, the mistakes that I make will be my mistakes and, and the good times will be the good times that, that I've created. It was really, it was really that, uh, you know, myself and my family. So uh, that was the first stipulation. The second thing was that I was going to be entirely honest and faithful to, to the sort of work I wanted to do. I suppose to come off the back of that, just that short excerpt, um, it would be fair to say that this year has been one of the harder years to be your own boss. <laughs> uh, and some of the, the, the mistakes were really, you know, they're not of my own making. There's nothing I've been able to do about some of the stuff that hasn't, frankly, worked very well this year. But uh, I do think that that's a, that's a solid reason why being, being your own boss in this creative business um, is... Uh, is so satisfying and, and rewarding. We've got to get to the satisfying and rewarding bit again, which we will do in 2021. I'm positive. The Friday photo walk. I know I always end up in the countryside and somebody asked recently, would I take some more industrial style pictures? And the answer's definitely yes there. Um, I was thinking about doing a bit of a photo walk on, on Sunday when I go to London. So I'm actually working, a, doing a wedding on Sunday. How about that? Work? Um, for, a, for a social photographer? Surely not. Um, but yeah, I was thinking about doing one there. But I, I'm kind of, I, I must admit, I'm a bit nervous because uh, London is uh, well, it's quite a controversial topic within the tier system that we have in the UK because the amount the infection rate the amount of infections um, should strictly I suppose uh, by the numbers put uh, London into the tier three system which would mean <laughs> I'm not working in London at a wedding on Sunday but equally it makes me I, I come from a part of the countryside where we we've been reasonably sheltered from the worst of this terrible pandemic of course we've uh, We've not been completely immune to it, of course not, as an area, but um, it does feel, I just, I'm just, I'm levelling with you here, I feel slightly nervous about it. I'll be wearing my mask, clearly. One here from uh, Anna McCarthy. Thank you, Anna, for your, your email. Uh, a, a proper follower of the, uh, the two podcasts that uh, I'm involved in. Proper friend, not follower, proper friend uh, of the podcast. Hi, Neil, hope you're doing well. Um, wrapped up against those cold winter winds today on the Friday photo walk. I'm going to be honest, it's not windy today. It's completely windless. Um, it's cold, though. <laughs> That's true. I've got, my, uh, I've got my gloves on. It's gloves weather. Every single Christmas, I, I do dread the whole business of buying presents and making them personal. I.e. getting a present that a person would really like rather than what, they, what I think they would like, or indeed what I like. My mum and dad used to, or my mum more than my dad, used to just um, <laughs> give you a list with precisely where you needed to shop. She'd done the homework, made it very, very easy for us. My brother-in-law actually sends links, and you have to, uh, you have to buy from that link, precisely from that link. Um, yet when <laughs> the reverse doesn't work. When we send him a link, he goes off and, and just decides what he, he believes would be better for us. It's a, it's a real art I think, to do this without asking the person directly, what do you want for Christmas? But still trying to get something meaningful. And then I started thinking, presents are great. We all love to be given a present and a surprise to open on Christmas Day. But uh, I have a very right-on, environmentally active, politically correct, vegan 22-year-old niece coming this Christmas. That's a lot of words to have on a button. And she rather refreshingly has suggested that we all buy just one present this year for each other. A secret Santa. See, that's what we've started doing in our family and make it something not new but recyclable or reused to save the world from materialism and stuff that we don't need. Bravo! Completely understand that. So I started to think about how experiences are a good presence to give, especially as we're, we're all hoping that 2021 will signal the start of being able to go out again to galleries and the theatres and, indeed, dare I say, other countries. <gasps> no! Travel? Now, that brought me to, to the men and how hard it's always been to buy presents for men. Forgive me, female listeners, if that sounds sexist. I don't mean to be, but uh, all my Christmases, as an adult, 
and they've been quite a lot stacked up now. <laughs> I found it virtually impossible to buy for the men, and that, that brought me to the Photography Daily show and buying a Patreon subscription to summon to the podcast as their Christmas present so they can get extra editions and stuff. I see where you're going. I'm going to have to employ you for the PR team. I've been shooting weddings, not full-time like you, but doing it for about 15 years. And if I had a quid for every time a bloke has come up to me, and it is usually a bloke, in brackets, to tell me they, they like to dabble a bit into photography themselves, or what lens are you using there? What camera would you suggest? Or do you like that bloke Don McCullin's work? Well, I'd be quite rich by now. Yeah, I get the same sort of questions. I usually, um... <laughs> well, you've heard my story, haven't you, where... Where if somebody says to me, how many pictures have you taken today? I look them square in the eye and I say, oh, around about four and a half gallons, which entirely confuses them. Silly answers. Or, or you know, when you get that, how long have you been doing this for? I, I, I normally say something like, wow, I shot my first wedding, uh, 1963. And then leave them looking at me trying to work out whether I've found the fountain of youth or whether I'm telling them a complete porky. Anyway, Anna says, then there are the various parents and brides and grooms who become parents over the years who've bought photography shoots or products or photography tuition vouchers for their partners or young teenagers from me over the years. See, that's a great idea, and that really does support photographers. And um, <laughs> I suppose I'm preaching to the choir slightly here because if you're a photographer listening to this, uh, you, you may well be able to supply the goodies that you need to, but uh, it's a really nice idea to uh, to purchase vouchers from photographers' websites. Maybe, um, I don't know, a specialist photographer like a, um, a pet photographer or, I don't know, newborn, etc. Last year, says Anna, I started teaching Russell the basics of photography, for example. Russell's a very successful businessman. And when he's not doing high-powered business things, he finds photography something that relaxes him and takes him right away from his work. A subscription to Photography Daily would be perfect for him and uh, for photography enthusiasts. So here I am, giving a shout-out to all your listeners. Why not get him or her a year's subscription to Photography Daily this Christmas? Well, <laughs> we uh, did have a way, actually, that you could... Um, that you, you, could, you could buy a gift, but um, that uh, subscription method has changed over to Patreon. I'll have to look more carefully at that, but uh, it's a nice idea, and equally, I think, a nice idea uh, to buy vouchers from photographers' websites who could do some mentoring for someone in your life who's, who's interested in, in photography. But as I say, <laughs> I could well be preaching to the choir on that one in, the, in this particular group on this particular podcast thank you Anna lovely to hear from you and um, thank you so much for all your support as well the Friday photo walk if you haven't yet uh, sent an email into to this show then I'd love to hear from you it, uh, it's it's great to uh, it's great to get emails from the from the regulars. He says, sounding like a pub landlord again. It's always fantastic, and I really appreciate it. And it's equally nice to get uh, emails and messages from people who've uh, who thought, you know what, I really must write in. I've got a couple of thoughts I'd like to share about photography, my own or or otherwise, some hints, some tips, some feedback, perhaps on the shows that you've heard. So um, make this weekend that weekend where you do that. Uh, you can send it two ways. You can either go to the... Uh, the con well, there's three ways, actually. You can either go to the contact page, uh, which is on the website, photographydaily.show. Fill in the form, send it off, easy. Or you can uh, send an email now to uh, studio at photographydaily.show, studio at photographydaily.show. Or if you do go to the website and uh, the individual show pages, which I diligently put up every single day, sometimes I write a bit more than other days, granted, but... Uh, uh, there's a comment section down the end now for for a, a little while i'd been forgetting to to hit the checkbox which uh, allowed for comments on the posts my mistake do apologize and you'll probably still find a few i'm trying to go back and track back and and correct that but uh, unfortunately on the, on squarespace which is uh, our choice for for design of websites um there isn't uh, well there doesn't appear to be a, a global way of setting comments permanently on but you can go through the comments section and um, I'm, I'm going to start um, 
referring sometimes to the comments that you make to the shows from uh, from there as well. So there we go, three ways to do that. Here's one from Alan Brentley. Hello, I've been a keen listener of the Photography Daily podcast since it came out of the Fujicast Daily. Uh, another great podcast. See, two mentions for the Fujicast this week. Uh, I'm not sure if this question has been asked before, but I'm sure it's been part of some discussion. Personal projects. How do you know something is worth putting the time into? I'm a believer, Neil, that uh, if you're going to do something, you should do it with uh, 100% effort. But should you discuss it to be guided by feedback to help motivate the idea? Or just wait until it evolves naturally, which may mean for some that it never ever happens. Oh yeah, procrastination and ideas. I have a wide interest in photography, ranging from landscape to sports, and uh, of course our Labrador John. So uh, pinning myself down to concentrate on one single thing can be hard work. I, you know, I love it, <laughs> Alan, when, when folk call their dogs very human names. John the Labrador. Wonderful. I know a, a proper all varieties dog called Dave. A long, long time ago, I feel like I want to go into the song. When, uh, when, I, when I were a lad and we had, uh, we had our, our Jack Russell, uh, what was I? I think I, what would I have been about? I don't know, 12, 13, 14 maybe. Uh, Mum and Dad thought it would be a good idea if I took, uh, took Snip. That's what we called our dog because it snipped. Snipped at you. Snipped and snapped. Uh, if I took it to uh, dog training lessons, which I did. And there was, um, there were, you know, there was, there, <laughs> there was me with the Jack Russell. There was a bit of a, a, bit of a tear away. And uh, all the other dogs that were, you know, proper swats really. But there was one other dog. There was another Jack. A long-haired Jack. We had a short-haired one. And the, uh, the long-haired Jack uh, was called Margaret. <laughs> Which I always thought was a strange name for a dog. Margaret. Come here, Margaret. Come on, Margaret. Anyway, back to Alan. Uh, I currently have a few project ideas. The main one being if these walls could talk, you see. Sometimes I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that you find yourself a great title first. And you work your images from there. I've done that a few times myself. Bus stops. Yeah, that's right, Neil, bus stops. Growing up in the village hub, uh, for kids to meet before disappearing to play for the evening to the local gossips talking about what they've been spying out of their windows. Bus stops is where we all met. That's, what, that's where we did the village business. If you pardon the expression, Alan. I passed some amazing old crafty ones recently on my travels through Scotland. And I'm going to do something with it, but not 100% sure which angle to go with. But I guess that's why it's a personal project. I need to figure that bit out for myself. Can we uh, hear from Thomas Heaton, landscape photographer? He has a great YouTube channel. Already done it. Alan, go to episode 71, YouTube's King of Landscape. I would like to talk a little bit more to... uh, to Thomas sometime, maybe in the new year, I'm sure he's probably got other things to think about just for the moment. Uh, Gareth Danks, landscape and street photographer, he's got a great YouTube channel, as well as a new Zine F8 street mag. Or Sven Martin, who's a sports photographer, he's been documenting the birth and continued growth of the mountain bike racing scene. That's a good idea. I really enjoyed my conversation, actually, with, uh, with Daniel Hughes, who we've mentioned today, um, when we were talking about cycling. So, uh, yeah, that would be a great idea. Keep up the good work. My Friday photo walks tend to be more of a Saturday bike ride, so I've included a a nervous, windy tripod self-portrait for the Dales ride a few weeks ago. I tell you what, let me include uh, that picture in the show notes today. If you you go to photographydaily.show, episode 157, today's Friday photo walk edition, um, I'll, I'll pop that one up so you can see what Alan looks like. He's Lycra. Can't believe how close we are to Christmas. I've, um, oh, here's a clearing here. I can get into the woods. Can I? Well, there's a, hmm. No, there's a bit of a stream to get through. I just know I'm going to fall into that. I got that feeling. Stand by. Hold on. Let me put you in my pocket for a second. Hold on. <laughs> oh. Wet foot, wet left foot, cracking. Um, although this is a bit more interesting. While you're still in my pocket, let me grab my camera and get a shot. So sort of that. It's quite a, a darkish morning. My photo walk this morning. So uh, quite a high ISO, 800. 
there you go. It's just, it, it's, um, how can I describe this? Lots and lots of new, new trees, sort of all about two, three feet apart. I'm gonna have to do some tree recognition for you. Let me just rescue you from my pocket. There you go. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some tree recognition. That's what I want for Christmas. Send me a really simple guide for being able to recognize trees. That'd be really useful. And I'd sound like I know a lot more what I'm talking about when I'm on these photo walks, because I'm often gonna be in woods, aren't I? One from Wallace Shackleton. I hear something I do know a bit about, who, uh, like me, is into his aviation f photography. And of course, we first, uh, I think, really started locking antlers about uh, aviation following uh, episode 111, didn't we? Which was uh, with Laird Kay, who was the aviation photographer. I take some amazing pictures. Some of, some of his uh, images make these, uh, make these uh, aircraft look like, I don't know, um, whale tails and, and just parts of animals. Really, really glorious work. Anyway, the episode is called Do What You Love, 111. Um, I know you like aviation pics, Neil, so here's a few of my own. Fill your boots. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll share Wallace's um, uh, Flickr account on the show page today so you can go and see what, uh, what he's been doing. Um, but uh, I did uh, have a look through them. And uh, I spotted a few, a few aircraft in there. Saw the, uh, saw the Robinson R22 helicopter, which is what um, I learned to fly in. That's what I did my, my solo in. And uh, yeah, it was a proper twitchy little two-seater, that one. You have, um, you have uh, I, think, I think it's under a second to dump what's called the collective if, you're in, if you have engine failure. So you can put it into to auto rotation and come down like a, um, a sycamore leaf, essentially. And, uh, oh, hang on. <laughs> I'm in the marsh. My foot's stuck. No, I'm all right. <laughs> this is not the finest idea. If I disappear in this bog, um, well, you won't be listening to the podcast, so we can safely assume it's been successful. Um, yeah, I remember that. It was a very twitchy aircraft, 15 mile an hour wind, and you were bucketing all over the place. But, um, yeah, I did, I did my first solo in that thing. And my first unofficial night flight when I was late back to the airfield. The, the ATC was packing his bag for the night, saw me arrive. The thing about a helicopter is you don't have to come in on the, on the runway with all the lights. You sort of zip in and go hide behind a big building, uh, unlike something with wings. But, uh, but sadly, they do make a lot of noise. So uh, as, I, as I was shutting down <laughs> behind a building, he popped his head around the corner and simply said, you owe me one, winked, no more was said. There's a, a few uh, few tail draggers on there as well, fixed wing tail draggers. I've always wanted to own a tiger moth. That would be a, a wonder. I, I, my uh, my wife bought me a uh, a, a, a treat. Uh, God, well, this must be going back what ten years? Yeah, our youngest is ten. Yeah, no, maybe eleven years then, or oh, thereabouts. But uh, yeah, it was a present that uh, was bought for me, and I, I think uh, I think my wife was still was pregnant with Thomas at the time. And uh, we went to an airfield, and there was a yellow tiger moth, and I went up, got a load of pictures. Maybe I should try and dig a few of those out, see if I can find those. If I can, I'll, I'll pop them up on the, uh, the show page. And then, uh, of course, uh, I also saw your pictures of the gyrocopter as well on there. Uh, now, that's something you'd have to be completely mad to want to fly, isn't it? And frankly, I would only fly one of those things if I were a human parachute. <laughs> it's something that just does not look safe or indeed right about uh, gyrocopters. But uh, thank you very much, Wallace. I'll make sure uh, we, we put your Flickr link in there so people can see your work. And thank you for your email. Uh, do send me your Flickr links. In particular, if, you, if you're making images on photo walks and you have a Flickr page or somewhere where I can go and see them, it's always great to see what you've been doing. Uh, just a quick word on the flying thing. Don't be thinking I'm buzzing the skies in things that defy all gravity and lift when they should in fact comfortably just screw themselves into the ground. No, my flying career ended earlier than planned when Mistress Camera promised satisfaction of a, a different and somewhat safer kind. And also, let's be clear about something else, please. When my photo walk alter ego said stream, it was more of a, a muddy brook, hence not hearing a real big splash misjudged the landing and really didn't spot the wet mud. Proper drama merchant. A quick shout out, as the youth say, 
to those who've made the leap to our Patreon. Thank you and appreciate your support really sincerely. As from February, the old way of listening to the bonus editions will be no longer. So make sure, members, that you read your email and swap across to the new way of consuming all those extra goodies. And of course, it being Patreon, it means it's far more of a visual platform. So films and stills and stuff like that, it's so much easier to share. If you haven't joined yet, what is Patreon? Well, it's really a way of supporting the title. Whilst the weekday shows are free to listen to, they're not free to make. And what started out as a, let's see if we can do this project, has grown into something where the idea is to talk with photographers worldwide about the why more than the how. In other words, inspiration above gear talk. Patreon is a platform used by many creatives to help fund the art that they prepare for those who enjoy and follow. I like to see it as, well, you know, I bought the first round of coffees at the bar, but now it's your turn just to buy the next one. There we go. Fair's fair. There are three levels, the first two being the most popular, where you get a chance to hear additional audio content, with the second also giving you an audio and very soon video glimpse into how the show is made. The planning of a show, hints and tips on how to make your own podcast, and even a behind-the-scenes scripts area. Head on over to photographydaily.show if that sounds like it could be something that helps inspire your photography. And hit the new Patreon button. Be part of the special patrons that want to keep this going as an inspirational guide and friendly voice into 2021 and beyond. Back to the walk uh, for the home stretch of today's English countryside jaunt, except to say, Sally and Brian Piper, thank you for the kind invite to Lake Michigan for a week of walks and possible talks when travel restrictions allow one day. I have filed your invite into the That Sounds Like a Lot of Fun file, and I'm already looking forward to seeing you both. I think it's time to uh, to head back, find the car. You know me with a car, I usually park it somewhere miles away and can't remember exactly where it is. But uh, get back and do some proper winter hot soup. A big... Um, big lump of sourdough. <laughs> that sounds very, sounds very nice, doesn't it? A big lump of sourdough, Neil. You make it sound so appetising. Anyway, last few questions for the day as I make my way back up towards that stream I jumped across just now. Definitely got a soggy left foot now. Marcus Layton, hello, Neil. Only just joined the podcast, but heard you say the other day, if you haven't written, now is your turn. Oh, we were mentioning this earlier. So here I am taking my turn. Love the concept of uh, recording more audio to go with slideshows. So I've got a couple of questions. Can you give me the perfect first all-in-one audio unit, please? That's easy. Uh, I'm going to suggest... I mean, there are some Tascam and Sony units. Uh, the TX650 in the Sony range is really good. That one clips nicely onto jackets and stuff. So that is... Actually, I, I was about to say H1, the Zoom H1. But maybe... The, uh, the Sony TX650 is, uh, is the better option because um, yeah, having that clip on the back is really good. I mean, it was designed really as a dictaphone, but I found it to be a really useful and great quality uh, microphone. Hang on a minute, there's some, some trees here with, which I don't know if these have been struck or was it, whether it was in the wind. It doesn't look like there was a lightning strike or anything. Should I expect to see a monolith any moment? since they are springing up in the world. And uh, another question about the audio. Do you let the clients keep everything that you record? Um, hang on a minute. Let me just get across this stream again. Ah, ah, that is daft. You will not believe me when I tell you now. <laughs> now my right leg is soggy. I definitely can't multi-skill. Um, do I let them keep everything? No, is the answer to that. I tend to, um, is it left or right here? What do you think, left or right? Just say it. Really? All right. Um, no, I don't let them keep everything. I, uh, I, I, I do what's called top and tail it, which means uh, the start of the useful part of the recording, that bit, uh, that's where it starts. And then right at the end, when we've done the last, if you like, formal part of the recording where, where they know I'm recording, that's where I tail it. So if it were a speech, for example, at an event like a wedding, it's uh, 
where somebody gets up to speak to where they sit down. And there's good reason for that because often um, they'll finish a speech and while I'm collecting everybody's units, because I can have as many as at, a, at an event, maybe four, possibly five, six units uh, pinned to people in their pockets here and there, but um, they'll, they'll disappear off and they'll go to the bathroom or they'll, they'll head outside and maybe have a smoke and talk to their friends and share stories that they probably shouldn't be sharing. And uh, I've always thought it's, you know, it's not worth ever embarrassing anybody by releasing some audio that, uh, that they, they wouldn't want released. So definitely um, top and tail it. But then I generally let them have uh, that audio in its entirety and I clip out the pieces that, uh, that I want to use. You know, you were right about your direction. I can actually see the car. Thank you, Marcus, for your, uh, for your email. And uh, last one of the week, this, this comes from Paul Balleresk. Since you're an audio man, have you ever thought about asking listeners to post their questions as an audio clip? Well, yes. Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. There's uh, actually an audio service where you can do that. Because audio files can be quite large files, particularly if somebody sends a WAV file. Um, MP3s are a bit smaller. But, uh, yeah, I have, I've, I have thought about doing that. It's a good idea. Um, I'd rather do it if there were some kind of uh, audio conduit, as it were. But, uh, yep, that's a good idea. So watch this space. Or listen to this space, if that's more appropriate. Earlier, by the way, just before we sign off properly, and play some inspirational bits from uh, our incredible guests, I was, uh, I was mentioning Christmas, wasn't I? And then, I? then I think I had to jump over that stream, put my left foot in it straight away. The reason I was mentioning Christmas is I'm just considering what we're going to do over that Christmas period. I may well, if it's all right with you, take a couple of days off. Um, because I think if I spend all my day in the studio, uh, and, and frankly, who's going to want to be interviewed by me during that period? But um, if, uh, if I do that, I suspect I'm, I might have a complaining family. Uh, but I, I definitely want to piece together some of, the, some of the interviews and some of the things that we've learned from, from our incredible guests uh, since the uh, since since the show launched earlier this year, um, so we'll be doing a bit of that over the, the Christmas and, and New Year period, no doubt. Anyway, talking of guests, are you ready for some inspiration? In no particular order, a bit random, but um, here's some thoughts from the, the fantastic guests that have been appearing since since we started the show in soundbite form this time. When I was thinking about giving up the day job and the nine to five and stuff and I really want to travel up till that point 2013 I migrated to Australia I never traveled ever I just went for it I you know I made it not just about photography but about that lifestyle at the time I mean my entire life the reason I went traveling is photography if I didn't have a camera in my hand, I don't think I would have been motivated. It's just something I wake up and think about every day. Um, whether I push a shutter every day or not is another thing. And I try to convey that in my work as much as possible, that it, it is emotional to me. It's always been an emotional connection. It was something that helped me through the disaster of my parents breaking up when I was about uh, 13 or 14. One of the absolute joys of what I do is this, this you know, the, the, the total uh, passion for exploring. Anytime I meet a famous photographer, I've met a lot of them, yeah, I yeah. say, well, you take my portrait so I can learn how they work. I talk about how they're going to look into the camera so as if they're looking at people. When I saw the images and started to realize the impact they could have, that I thought much larger than simply making nice pictures or making interesting pictures, I, I suddenly realized that these pictures could be a campaign. And on that note, that's it for another week of Photography Daily. On the Patreon, you'll find the script from the Thursday edition which featured the wonderful letter from listener Leon Tyler from the episode Lost and Found Creatively if you're a behind the scenes member who's on next week then Monday David Fettes a man who decided to become a wildlife photographer overnight just because he decided aged 50 proper caution to the wind story which is wonderful and a man who will not just inspire you but could just save your life Tuesday the Snapshot Edition features Owen Humphreys, who has a tale to tell us about the day he shot the Royal Wedding. Wednesday, YouTuber Jamie Windsor, who's made explaining the art and philosophy of photography a visual feast. There's a TBC hanging over the Thursday snapshot topic-wise, but the photo walk is back as ever on Friday. 
And just when you thought it was over, I remembered I'd recorded just a few more moments for this week's show. Have a good weekend. Don't forget to email. You did kind of promise. I'm sure, I heard you. Try to get some mud off. Here's the car. See? Hello, car. Have you missed me? Well, I was wondering if you'd be back, to be honest. Most weeks she seemed to be lost. No, I found you no props at all. Wait a minute, what are you doing? What do you mean? Well, don't be getting in here with your, with your wet shoes. Oh, have you noticed? I'll tell you what, I won't mention it if you don't. Take me home. Photography Daily is a Loading Zone production.